three masses on three springs. Three identical 8.5 kilogram masses are hung by three identical springs as you can see in the figure. So mass one, mass two, and mass three, spring one, spring two, and spring three. Each spring has a force constant of 7.80 kilonewtons per meter and was 12 centimeters long before any masses were attached to it. So that's the equilibrium length. Part A, draw a free body diagram of each mass. Part B, how long is each spring when hanging as shown? Hint, first isolate only the bottom mass, then treat the bottom two masses as a system. Finally, treat all three masses as a system. Okay, so I'm going to start with uh, defining delta x sub i, the amount of elongation of the ith spring. All right. So uh, we can start drawing the free body diagrams in part A. So let's start with free body diagram for block one. Block 1 is the one that's at the bottom. Block 1 feels the weight, gravitational force from the Earth, mg. And then there will be an elongation of delta x1 in the first spring, which will uh, cause a spring force k times delta x1 pointing in the upper di up direction. So this is our y-axis. If I draw a free body diagram for block 2, that's the one in the middle, as you can see. So this is block 2. Now block 2, of course, has a weight. It's identical to block 1, mg. And because it's hanging down on the second uh, spring, there will be a restoring force on the second spring pointing up, which will be uh, k times delta x2 pointing up. And because there is an elongation in the first spring and uh, k times delta x1 is pointing up on block 1, it will be pointing down on block 2. So this will be... Uh, basically uh, expanding the spring here and the, the force on, K, uh, on the second mass will be in such a way to compress the spring back to its original um, equilibrium length. So there will be K times delta x1 pointing down on block 2. And free body diagram for block 3 which is the topmost block, we have a similar situation. The weight pointing down, mg, there will be a restoring force, k times delta x3 on the third spring pointing up, and then we will have a k times delta x2 pointing down. So you can see um, this is basically stretching the, uh, the third spring, so the restoring force is pointing up. And at the same time, uh, the second mass is stretching S2, and the third mass will be, uh, will, will feel a restoring force, K times delta X2 pointing down, down to recompress it. Okay, so that's the answer to part A. Now part B, asks me how long is each spring when hanging as shown. So this is an equilibrium situation. So I can say that the net force on the y-axis for all of these springs should be zero. So if I start from block one, 
block one has its weight balanced by the restoring force on spring one k times delta x1 pointing up and remember that these uh, masses are 8.5 kilograms each so 8.5 times 9.8 is equal to the spring constant the identical springs have spring constant 7.80 kilonewtons so it is 7.8 times 10 to 3 delta x1 from this we can calculate the elongation of the first spring as 8.5 times 8.5 times 9.8 divided by uh, seven, the spring constant 7.8 times 10 to 3 this gives us 0 0.0 one zero seven meters which is one point zero seven centimeters and this is basically the final uh, position minus the initial position one point zero seven centimeters is the elongation the final uh, length of the sp uh, spring will be its initial length 12 centimeters plus the additional elongation 1.07 so it will be 13.1 centimeters so that was the question how long is the spring the spring has been elongated by an amount 1.07 centimeters uh, and we reach 13.1 centimeters using three significant figures so we have rounded it to three significant figures now for block two, we have uh, the weight of the block pointing down, uh, the restoring force on spring one pointing down, the restoring force on spring two pointing up, balancing these two. So uh, this gives me K times delta X2 is equal to, because K times delta X1 was mg, 2mg and therefore I find that the amount of stretch of the second spring will be 2mg divided by k the spring constant which is uh, 2 times 1.07 2.14 centimeters and now I can calculate the uh, final length final length minus the initial length is uh, 2.14 centimeters and therefore because the initial length was the same for all springs 12 plus 2.14 this gives me 14.1 centimeters for the second spring equilibrium length up to three significant figures and for block three I have uh, the weight mg pointing down k delta x2 pointing down so I will have mg plus k delta x2 uh, being compensated for uh, by the upper spring k delta x3 is the force and delta x3 therefore becomes because k delta x2 was 2 mg 3 mg divided by k and this is 3 times 1.07 which is 3.21 centimeters of change in length so the final length of this spring will be uh, 12 centimeters plus 3.21 centimeters which gives us up to three significant figures 15.2 centimeters all right so what have we done here so we have uh, three springs 
identical springs, they have the same spring constant, the same initial length, 12 centimeters. When a spring is stretched, a restoring force will develop on the two sides acting in opposite directions, trying to compress it back to its equilibrium length. So, um, on mass 1, which is hanging from spring 1, the, the, the mass 1 has a weight M, M1g or mg because it's the same for all uh, masses. Uh, this is basically trying to stretch the spring, which is counteracted by the spring force K delta x1 pointing up. For the uh, mass 2, we have, because S1 has been stretched, it's trying to pull it back to its original length, so S2 feels the force K delta x1 pointing down. Uh, it has its weight and also because it's trying to, these two forces are trying to stretch the spring 2, basically spring 2 restoring force will be pointing up and the same situation for block 3. And because we have an equilibrium situation, net force on the y-axis is 0. Free body diagram for block 1 tells me mg equals k delta x1. Free body diagram of block 2 tells me mg plus k delta x1, the forces pointing in minus j hat direction, are compensated by the spring force on the spring second spring, k delta x2. And similar situation here, mg plus k delta x2 is k delta x3 on the third spring. And when I calculate the delta axis by plugging in the numbers for each spring, then I have to add the original length to the amount of elongation to find the final length of each uh, spring. So that's what I have done there, here. So the hint given here, first isolate the bottom mass, then treat two masses as a system, three masses as a system, is uh, also one way of doing it. So if, if I draw the free body diagram of the uh, two masses together, then I would put here 2mg pointing up, k delta x2 pointing, uh, pointing down, pointing up, uh, 2mg pointing down. And if I isolate uh, these three masses, then I would put 3mg pointing down, k delta x3 pointing up, which is basically what I find from these equations. So I find delta x2 is 2mg over k, delta x3 is uh, 3mg over, uh, so delta x2 is 2mg over k, delta x1 is mg over k, and for this case, delta x3 is 3mg over k. So basically, these could be obtained by considering free body diagram of block 1, block 1 plus block 2, and block 1, block, block 2, block 3 all together. So that is the suggestion given here, so it would be an easier uh, solution.